Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. No joke, there's already a new software upgrade for the Model Y 4680 owners. Now, the Model Y long range currently has a 0 to 60 time of 4.8 seconds. It does also have an upgrade for acceleration boost. It costs $3,000 for the Model Y and reduces the 0 to 60 time down to 4.2 seconds from 4.8. There is also a similar option for the Model 3 long range for $2,000, reducing the 0 to 60 time to an impressive 3.7 seconds. It increases acceleration, but not at the sacrifice of range. And now we're also hearing that this is an available option for the new Austin Model Y. Again, the same 0 to 60 time as the Model Y long range with the acceleration upgrade down to 4.2 seconds, 0 to 60. Thanks once again to the great YouTube channel, Spoken Reviews. Now, supposedly, according to insiders, there is not going to be a range upgrade, but it still wouldn't surprise me if there was. Sure, I would love it to be a thing because it would mean that the 4680 cells are that much better and obviously the profit they will produce would be that much better if they can upgrade range and performance. It may not be an upgrade to 350 miles, but it might be an extension to say 300 miles. That's still quite a difference. Again, the Model Y reviewer from Spoken Reviews still thinks there will be a software upgrade for range and is very excited about it. Personally, I am still unsure, but what matters much more is the speed at which the 4680 cells are produced and how quickly the energy density does improve. I mean, Tesla are so far ahead of the competition, they're able to limit their offerings with software. There are certain elements of convenience, luxury, or excitement that people are willing to pay more for that make no difference to the mission whether they have them or not. Like having a slightly faster accelerating car will not also accelerate the mission to renewable energy. But if Tesla makes cars that are just too good and they want to hold back some of it with software and charge extra to unlock it fully, then they can get away with it due to the lack of competition in the EV industry. There could be all sorts of software upgrades to come, perhaps a smorgasbord of features each costing thousands of dollars with 100% gross margin. For example, can you guess what the next software upgrade might be? I think I can, but if you're thinking of something that ends up not being what I suggest, write it down in the comments. In fact, if any of you can also think of any software upgrades that Tesla could add, aside from the ones we already mentioned, then let me know, it might be interesting. Anyway, another upgrade I could think of was charging speed. Right now, according to insiders, the charging speed is definitely being software limited to about 200 kilowatts. Imagine if you could upgrade to 3000 kilowatt charging speed for $2,000 or something. Tesla has spent a fortune and a lot of blood, sweat and tears in making the world's best battery. As a result, perhaps it now charges faster than the previous batteries. It may charge so much faster that it saves you 10 minutes every time you charge. That is value. Tesla have created true value. They have given you time whereas Audi gives you luxurious orange stitching for an extra $3,000. It's not the same. Remember, Tesla is diamond. Everyone else is glitter. Of course, the great thing is that you can buy the base car for less money, and eventually, when you can finally afford it, you can start upgrading it. It's amazing. And surely, over time, most vehicles are going to eventually unlock all these software features. It's almost like buying a smaller house that's all you can afford at the time, and then adding an extra bedroom on, and various extensions when you can afford them. It's a pricing model that makes you rethink supply and demand. Consumers can't afford $70,000 on a new car, people like to say, but what if it was just $60,000 now and the remaining $10,000 over the next three years when it suited the consumer? The difference is that after the average of six years of ownership, well, where the customer would usually sell their car and replace it with a more modern version, well, the Tesla likely already replaced itself with the latest version with an OTA. The budget said consumer has for a replacement vehicle, well, instead, that could have been used for upgrading the existing Tesla with software. The end result is that said consumer still has the latest Tesla, yet didn't need to upgrade their car. Well, actually, they literally upgraded their existing car instead of replacing it. Sure, some of the hardware may still be a little dated, but Tesla can replace that too if necessary. The point is, it costs very little to stay up to date with the latest Tesla compared to the latest Mercedes and said budget can be used in upgrading the Tesla with the software features. So what does this software actually mean as far as specifications are concerned? Well, it means that the Austin Model Y is clearly capable of more acceleration than we realized, or it has more power than we initially thought. Now, usually more acceleration comes at the cost of range. Even the Model 3 Performance has less range than the Model 3 Long Range. Now, it's possible that this extra acceleration is due to the 4680 cells. Supposedly, the cells have six times more power whilst only having five times more energy. In other words, the cells have a higher power increase relative to their energy increase. 
If both the Austin and Long Range Model Ys have the same amount of power, then at the battery day proportion, it would mean that the Austin version would have just a 63 kilowatt hour usable battery, maintaining the battery day ratio of six times more power. That's not the case, as we've seen it charge more than that. So if we reverse engineer it the other way, we could work out the actual times more power and energy the cells really have. Okay, now if the power is the same as the long range at 413 kilowatts, the same power as the long range, and we take the usable battery size that we have seen at 68 kilowatt hours for the Austin Model Y, using that data, I played around with a few numbers we have, as you can see in the table, and I ended up getting an energy difference of 4.8 times per cell and a power difference of 5.3 times per cell. So that's 5.3 times more power with the 4680 cell over the 2170 cell. Now, of course, if there is a battery upgrade to perhaps 80 kilowatt hours, then that changes everything again. Obviously the power would be the same, but it would mean that the 4680 cell has 5.7 times more energy, which wouldn't appear to be the right specifications judging by battery day. However, the power may actually be less as the Austin Model Y is slightly lighter. The acceleration might even be limited to 4.2 seconds, and the vehicle actually might be capable of a quicker acceleration than that. But perhaps Tesla don't want it to compete with the performance version. Of course, it probably uses the same powered motor as the long range anyway. So it seems we're already close to the battery day target of how much more power and how much more the energy will have compared to the 2170 based on this new data. However, even if this vehicle doesn't have a software upgrade, there will eventually be a chemistry upgrade that eventually we would hope that this car is capable of a much longer range than the Model Y long range. Now, despite the 4680 cell pack being so much smaller than the 2170 pack, there's actually 3% more volume for Jelly Roll. We're expecting the chemistry to be better than 2170 eventually. We can place 3% more of this improved chemistry than we have in the 2170 pack. And this 4680 pack is also saving weight due to the structure, etc. Anyway, you know where I'm headed here. It would not be unrealistic to eventually expect a range in excess of 350 miles from the Austin Model Y. I mean, eventually perhaps even high 300s. This battery pack has more volume than the 2170 and is more energy dense. A 90 kilowatt hour battery is not out of the question, and the weight would be very similar to what it is now. Of course, one of the other issues with the software upgrades is the Osborne effect, or cannibalizing the Fremont Model Y long range, which has to make you think. Even if it's not possible now, eventually the Austin Model Y will have more range than the long range Fremont Model Y, under the assumption that Austin Model Y does require a minimum of 828 cells for structure. It would therefore be inevitable that Austin would have more range. I think there would be little point for the long range from Fremont if that was the case. I think this is too conflicting. So what about this? What if eventually Fremont ended up making the standard range LFP rear wheel drive Model Y, same as the one from Shanghai? I think it likely that there'll be a Model 3 factory in Texas eventually anyway. So it's possible Fremont could just serve as the LFP factory for the US along with the SNX lines. I have a feeling a lot has changed since the last time Tesla offered the rear wheel drive Model Y as in consumers are now desolate that their Model Y is out of their price bracket, only to discover a rear wheel drive version for potentially under $50,000. Wow, a brand new Model Y for under $50,000. What's the catch? About 230 miles of range. Well, I think consumers might be more willing to accept a lower range Model Y these days. A standard range 2170 Model Y was initially for sale in the US, but Elon was not happy with the range it offered. It felt off-brand almost for Tesla at least for the US market. But I think perhaps these days consumers might be less entitled and accept that they simply may not be able to afford a long range EV, but the fact that they can afford an EV anyway is a big enough deal relative to oil prices. The lack of convenience of a standard range is now outweighing the inconvenience of having less money each week after paying for gas. I mean, it's highly possible when Tesla launched the Model Y, they saw the demand they were getting and thought, there's little point selling a standard range when enough people want this much more profitable long range version. At the time, Tesla were also production limited rather than sell limited. So the opportunity cost of making a standard range was perhaps an additional $5,000 profit by making a long range version. Since then, of course, EVs have become more popular, consumers know Tesla more, and there are more charging stations around. Range anxiety doesn't seem to be much of a thing anymore, Anyway, I'm pretty sure we can all agree that a rear wheel drive Model Y would sell pretty well in the US now, and Tesla can't be cannibalizing their 2170 line with 4680s. On top of that, we also have Panasonic moving over to 4680 cells too, perhaps eventually to replace the 2170 cells. So for Fremont to move to just LFP, that could make sense. Shanghai too could just be LFP, 
and then Indonesia could serve as the 4680 export hub. That might be a tidy solution. It would also remove the complications that 2170 sales bring. Judging by this, it would seem that 2170 sales are getting in the way and complicating product lines. Seeing what a hassle the sales potentially cause and that Panasonic are now investing into 4680s, I think it likely the 2170 sale does get retired, perhaps in the next couple of years. And then that would make for a very tidy operation. Anyway, we digressed slightly there. I guess it's just exciting to see what the greatest engineers in the world can achieve if they worked really hard for several years. I'm not ruling out a range upgrade with these new Teslas. However, if there is one, I'm not expecting it to be huge. I don't think it can risk cannibalizing the long range at this stage. It does seem logical to phase out the 2170 sales, and if that's easy enough to do, they may even replace 18650 with 4682. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.